thank you for your presence that's here. Thank you, Lord, for gracing us with your presence, God. We don't deserve it, but you love us, God, and we know that, that, that you want to do something special in our hearts and in our minds, God, and we know that you've called us. We're not here by coincidence. We're not here by accident. We're here because you, God, put it together for us to be here, God. You, you designed it for us to be here. It's your intention for us to be here, God. You have a calling upon each and every one of our lives, Lord. And we thank you so much for what you're doing, what you've already done, and what you're going to continue to do, Father. Lord, I pray that as I get ready to share your word, you would set me aside and, and speak through me, my God. And just, Lord, let your word move in the hearts of your people. Challenge us, convict us, grow us, develop us, train us, God. That when we leave here, we, we leave here better than when we came in. Closer to you, Father. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we say amen and amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Give the person next to you a high five. And you guys can go ahead and be seated. Look at the person next to you and say, walk it out. Some of you guys are getting ready to dance already, huh? Today, I want to speak to you on the topic of walk it out. I'm, I'm, they're going to drop a beat. I'm going to start dancing. No, I'm just kidding. Walk it out. I'm so grateful for what God is doing in my life and everything that, you know, he, where he's brought me from and where he's, you know, where he's taking me to. And uh, God has just been so, so, so good to me and my, my life. And I just want to give you know, thanks to the Lord up above, amen, my heavenly father, my Abba father, who I strive daily to seek him, I strive daily to be in the word, I strive daily to talk to him and just be a man of prayer, I really, my goal and my focus is to be a man that's close to God, and I'm always worshiping the Lord, I have my radio set on worship music at all times, English and Spanish, come on somebody, <laughs> trying to learn Spanish, at, at, over there in Texas, I ordered my first burrito, in Spanish, I did okay, I did all right. I was able to get my part out that I rehearsed time as I was nervous. And then, and then I ordered a burrito, and then, uh, and then he spoke back, the, 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 the waiter or the guy he spoke back, he asked me if I wanted something and I panicked, I freaked out. I was like, ah, oh, that's enough, stop, I'll take a soda, please. <laughs> Julian witnessed it, he called me out, he said, ah, oh, he got you, huh? <laughs> but, um, but, but I'm just, I just really, really want to be close to God. And I pray that all of us have that desire to want to be close to God. And I'm so thankful for everything he's doing in my life. Uh, um, I'm thankful for my pastors. How many of you love Pastor Tony and Sister Veronica? Give them a big hand. Amen. We have leaders that love God. We have leaders that are great examples. We have leaders of conviction. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for my pastor who had just a pivotal point in my life. 18 years old, lost and bound confused, unsure where to go. God sent Pastor Tony to, to, to be that spiritual father to me, to guide me and lead me. The advice he first gave me when I gave my life to Jesus was fall in love with God. And that today is still on my priority list is to fall in love with God daily. And that advice changed my life and that has been my pursuit ever since is just to fall in love with God. So I'm so thankful for my pastors, Pastor Tony, Sister Veronica, for taking me in like a son and the family, the Velasco family, uh, taking me in and just helping me and being there, teaching me so much things uh, uh, on marriage, on the topic of marriage. Pastor Tony and Sister Veronica have exampled a great marriage, a wonderful marriage. I, I had no examples of, of, of marriage growing up, of a successful marriage, no examples. My parents weren't married, and then when they did get married, it was almost worse. Like, man, you know, and uh, and and uh, and I just I hadn't seen a good example of a marriage, and then and then God brought them into my life, and so and that helped me with my beautiful wife, Sister Tamika, Amen, who I love very much. I love my wife very much. She's amazing. She's awesome. She's strong. She 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 keeps me on the right path. You know, she'll correct me. She'll chop me. She'll rebuke me. She's an awesome wife. She's an awesome mother to our six beautiful children. And, uh, and, and so I'm so thankful to her. She's a down gang girl. She loves God and she's ready to roll. Amen. And so, so I'm thankful to my wife, my family, and also the leadership here uh, 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 in Victor Irish Hawaiian Islands. Amen. I, I'm so thankful for, for you guys allowing me to be here and share with you guys. I'm a son of the house. Uh, uh, um, me and my wife got sent out about a year and a half ago to, to Honolulu. 
And uh, and so we, we, we got, if, you, if you're unsure, we got launched out a, uh, a little over a year ago to go start a church there in, in town. And so that's where we've been at. But we were born and raised right here in Big Large Hawaiian Island. So, so coming here is like coming home. Being here and being able to speak to you guys is a, is a privilege, almost like a, a brother to, to my, my co-laborers and my fellow brothers and sisters. And, and so it's a privilege to be here. I'm excited to be here. And I know that Pastor Tony doesn't take it lightly who he allows behind the pulpit. It's a place of reverence. It's a place to respect. And so I count it an honor and a privilege to be, to even be right here being able to share with you guys. Amen. And so, but I came ready. Amen. Look at the person next to you say, are you ready? I came ready to share the word of God. We came back from Mighty Men. And, and let me tell you something. God did such a great thing there at Mighty Men of Valor. And uh, Dusty, you're good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I promised him I would never make him stand again the whole service. He, he does like two services, and then he'll come help us in Honolulu. This past Sunday, I had him stand the whole time during the message and everything. And later on, I was like, Dusty, I'll never do that to you again. So I love, I love Dusty. Amen. Give Dusty a big hand. <laughs> um, man, God did so much there at Mighty Men. Are the men of God still on fire? He did so much there at Mighty Men. He, he refired me up, man, re, 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 refined me, refired me, you know, uh, re envisioned me, everything, re-everything. He just redid me. I got, I got a whole makeover there at Mighty Men, amen, and, uh, and God just did so much. From the minute it started till ended, it, just, it was elevation the whole time. The messages got better and better and better. The, the, the expectations were met. God was there, and, and for over 5,000 men did not leave there the same. I guarantee you that. We were there in San Antonio, Texas. And, uh, and then pray for Pastor Tony because he went from Texas to Oklahoma. He's ministering there in Oklahoma. And then he's going to be going to New Mexico. And then he'll be back on Thursday. Amen. So keep him up in prayer. Keep up the family in prayer. Amen. And uh, so it was just such an awesome thing. And just two nuggets that I got that I want to share with you guys there from Mighty Men. And I believe this could be a word for somebody. I got two things. Your warfare is not normal. Because your calling is not normal. Your warfare is not normal because your calling is not normal. I know sometimes we go through it. I know sometimes we get hit. I know sometimes we feel the devil right there at our doorsteps and just trying to lie to us and, and beat us down and, and get us to quit. Well, I'm here to tell you that your warfare is not normal because your calling is not normal. In other words, you are called by God to do great things, and the devil knows that, and he's going to do everything he can to stop you from saying yes to God. He's going to do everything he can to stop you from being close to God. Your warfare is not normal. Sometimes you ask, why? Why every time I think about going to church or I step into the church, I, that all of a sudden things around me get even worse, or all of a sudden the baby's tripping, the family's tripping, the spouse is tripping, and the dog is barking too much, and it's just getting crazy. Every time I just think about getting close to God, it gets harder around me. Or is that just me sometimes? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, because the devil does not want you to serve God. You are here because God brought you here. God has a calling upon your life. Your warfare is not normal because your calling is not normal. And then somebody also told me this, God is faithful to those who are faithful. God is faithful to those who are faithful. Remain faithful where you're at. Maybe sometimes you're doubting or you're questioning, you're unsure of, what, of why you're even here or what God is doing. Oh, I'm here to tell you, remain faithful because God is faithful to those who are faithful. You stay faithful at your post. Keep coming to church. Keep serving God. Keep you know, read your word, be in your word as much as possible, get close to God, stay faithful where you're at, faithful in your ministry, faithful at your post, faithful in attendance, faithful in giving. When you are faithful, God will be faithful to you. God will provide for you. God will help you. God will strengthen you. God will encourage you. God will pick you up. God will turn your situation around. Oh, I don't know if this is just for me. God will turn your situation around. God will provide on you. The Bible says he will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing upon your life. I don't know about you, but I, I, I would love a blessing upon my life. Amen. God is good. God is awesome. God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. And so, so, uh. Those are just two things that I wanted to share uh, with you this morning that I got from Mighty Men of Valor. That's just, that's just a little bit co compared to what we got. So much good stuff. I got notes for days uh, on my phone. I took a lot of good notes, and, uh, and so I'm excited. Amen. Walk it out. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 25. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. You know, it matters to God how we walk. Somebody say walk. walk. Say walk it out. Walk it, out. it matters to God how, how you walk. How you walk, your daily walk matters to God. How you carry yourself. You know, you could tell a lot about somebody by the way that they walk. I learned this at a young age. I used to get corrected from my dad because I, I, I would walk with my head down. And my dad used to always say, walk with your head up. Walk fast. Act like you know where you're going. Even if you don't know where you're going, act like you know where you're going. And, 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 and at the time, I didn't consider it. At the time, I didn't care. But as I got older and I did go through situations or times in life where I would feel depressed or I would feel purposeless, I would remember because I used to look down, he used, he used to say, keep your head up, be aware of everything, be aware of what's around you, don't just look down. You might miss 100 bucks, he would say. You might miss money if it was there because you're just stuck looking down. Walk, be aware, be aware of your surroundings. And, 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 and today I can say that that has impacted me because times when I'm walking and feeling, when the devil's lying and I feel purposeless or I'm doubting or, or struggling, I remember my dad's voice, pick your head up. Walk fast. Walk with purpose. Even if you don't know where you're going, act like you know where you're going. And that encourages me. That, that helps me. And I just walk. If you walk with me, you'll probably know I walk fast intentionally because I got to act like I know where I'm going. I got to feel a certain way. If I clean my house, I get dressed up. I put on my running shoes. I put my look a certain way. And I'm just like in this mode of like I, I got I to gotta feel it. You know what I'm saying? And anything I do, I get dressed up because I want, I'm, I want to be somebody. I'm trying to go somewhere, you know. And, uh, and it, it has helped me uh, uh, to consider the way that I walk. And God wants us to walk a certain way. Galatians 5.25 says this, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Somebody say keep in step. What does that mean? That means, that means, you know, be in alignment. That means follow the path. Keep in step with the spirit. I picture, I picture you, sometimes you might, I don't know if you were little, and, you know, your dad or somebody was walking in front of you, and there's big footsteps, a path, and when you're little, you're trying to follow those same, you know, footsteps. Keep in step with the spirit of God. The spirit of God is before us. God is before us, and it's our job to walk in the footsteps of God. Walk and keep in step with the spirit of God. The Bible says to keep in step with the Spirit of God. It matters to God how you walk. It's important how you and I walk in our calling, how we walk as Christians serving the Lord. It, it matters how we walk. You know, the devil doesn't want you to walk godly. The devil wants you to walk defeated. The devil wants you to walk depressed. A life outside of God it, it, it is a life of chaos and hurt and turmoil, and I come from that. I, I, I didn't always serve God. I knew of God growing up, but I, I, I allowed the enemy to, you know, eventually just have his way with me, and I got, I got you know, uh, uh, swallowed into a life of just, you know, I, I, I started drinking and as a young kid drinking and fighting and doing all these different things and just trying to be who I wasn't meant to be and trying to follow the crowd and all these different things. And, uh, and I, 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 the devil had me walking in defeat and almost depressed and, you know, sad and anger and bitterness and, you know, trying to follow the crowd. But we have to walk and keep in step with the spirit. It's important to walk with the Lord the way that he wants us to walk. Somebody said this. It's your road and yours alone. Others may walk it with you, but no one can walk it for you. Nobody can walk it for you. People can walk with you. We can walk with you in this walk with the Lord. I always tell people, listen, we're, in, we're, we're all headed in the same direction, going you know, in the same way towards Christ. And, and listen, nobody can walk it for you. Uh, uh, you, you, you. We can walk with you, but eventually you have to begin to walk on your own with your relationship with God. Amen? And, and, uh, and we, no one can walk it for you, but others may walk with you, but no one can walk it for you. We have to learn how to walk with the Lord. I have a video that I want them to play. It's different styles of walking. You know, like I said, you can tell a lot about somebody by the way that they walk. And here's a video about ways, a few different ways people walk.
That's all. That was just a video that I found, the different types of walking. There was another video I saw, just a lot of different ones that I thought, you know what? I wasn't trying to get spiritual with it, but there was even one that was the tippy toe, like somebody that walks around on their tippy toes. And I was like, sometimes there's people in church that are walking on their tippy toes. They're, 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 live, they're hiding. They're in sin, and they're, they don't want nobody to see them, and they're just kind of on their tippy toes. There's people that walk a certain way, and you can tell how they're doing in life by the way that they walk. And, and we have to... Make sure that we're walking according to God. We saw the professor, somebody walking out, you know, the smart guy. There's people in church that are the smarty pants. They know the word in and out, quote scripture, right, from beginning to end and stuff like that. It was funny. I just thought it was a funny video. But it matters to God how you walk. Look at somebody say, it matters how you walk. It matters how you walk. You know that the Bible talks a lot about walking. We're going to get into script, some scriptures soon. But I want you to know that our, our bodies are not meant to be still. You have to walk. You have to move forward. You, our bodies are meant to be active, constantly moving. Our bodies are not meant to be still. And I know this because one time when I was hospitalized in the hospital, uh, 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 I, had a, I had like an infection on my foot. This was like a life changer for me. I had a small little cut that got infected. It didn't heal. It couldn't, I don't know why it didn't heal. It, it just got infected and infected. I tried to put peroxide and you know, different things, uh, uh, and I wasn't healing, and so I, I, I got a bad fever, I got real sick. We were on our anniversary, and I, uh, you know, I was all messed up on my anniversary, my poor wife had to put up with me, and, uh, and, and then it was so bad, a small cut, it was so bad, I went to the hospital, and they kept me there. So I was, I was in the hospital, they admitted me in the hospital, and uh, I had a, 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 a cut on my foot that got infected. That was bad, because I was like, man, my body's not healing. What's wrong with me? A small cut. And I was really not healthy. I was eating bad. I was, you know, not caring about my sugar intake and all these different things. Enough to where, I, you know, I didn't, I was like, oh, dude, this is not good. And so I changed my ways after that. But I remember as I was laying there in the hospital, they gave me a, a blood thinner, a shot. It hurt, too. It was like a, a, a shot that as soon as, you know, they pull the needle out, you really feel that thing just like kind of, does anybody know what I'm talking about, right? Cause, because when you're laying still for so long, your blood can start clotting. So that tells me that our bodies are not meant to be still. You and I are meant to walk. You and I are meant to move. God wants us to be a people that walk with him. God wants us to be a people that are spiritually awakened, radical for God, on fire for God, walking with the Lord, walking, keeping in step with the Spirit, moving when God says move, going where God wants us to go, being about God's business. Does anybody here want to be about God's business? Because how many of you know when you're about God's business, he's about your business, amen? When you, and, and so we're meant to walk, we're meant to move, not be spiritually dead, broken, laying there, doing nothing about nothing, about no business, just lazy, comfortable, crooked, doing whatever we want to do. We're not meant to be still. We're meant to walk with God. Somebody say walk with God. We're meant to move. We're meant to be about God's business. God has a calling upon your life. God has, he, he chose you. He predestined you before the beginning of the creation of the world. God knows you. God loves you. God wants to use you. God has a calling upon you. You hear the two young men saying, I know God saved me. God placed me here. But I also know that one day I'm going to the UTC. They're making moves. They're going somewhere. They're doing something for God. I don't know about everybody here, but I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but I know that God, just like God has a calling for them, God has the calling for you. It might not be the UTC, but it might be to join the worship team. It might be to join a Bible study or even lead a Bible study. Come on, somebody. It might be to become a pastor or a leader or an evangelist or a rapper or a singer or a dancer. I don't know, but God has a calling upon your life. You are not meant to be still, spiritually still. You are not meant to be spiritually dead. God placed his spirit inside you and I to wake us up and so that we can be about his business, so that we can walk with God. God and live for God and do what God wants us to do. But the devil wants us to be still in a negative way. There's a good way to be still. Be still and know that I am God. To be like, to be in solitude and get a hold of God and just really fall in love with God. There's a good way, but, but the devil will also want you paralyzed where you're, where you're still and not doing nothing. You're ineffective, not producing nothing. Not, not duplicating yourself, not growing, not adventuring. That's some of us sometimes in a spiritual sense. We're not producing nothing. We're paralyzed spiritually. We're not effective 
in what we do. I've been, I've had seasons in my life where I'm not effective. I felt not effective. I felt like I wasn't getting nothing done, doing a whole bunch of nothing, you know? I, I felt like that. I've had seasons like that. But God wants me to move. God wants you and I to walk the way he wants us to walk. Amen? Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to go across, go, go through a few scriptures that talk about walking, and then we're going to bring it to a close. I won't keep you long. Tell your neighbor, walk it out. Some of you are tired just talking about walking. Come on, somebody. Some of you guys are like, man, I'm, I'm already dead. I'm already tired. I'm, pre I'm preparing for a 10K. I'm getting re ready to run a 10K for Run for Hope, amen, in, in October. And so I'm doing a whole lot of running. I'm not just walking. I'm running uh, to one mile, two miles, three miles. And, and then I gotta get, I'm warming up to four miles and then five miles. And then a, a, a 10K is about six. It's a half a marathon, about six and a half miles or so. And so I'm doing a whole bunch of that. Uh, um, but God wants us to walk for him, amen? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The Bible reads like this. It says, and you were dead in the trespasses of sins, in trespasses and sins, in, one, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all lived in the passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So we see here the scriptures talking about how we used to walk. We used to walk a certain way. We used to be dead in sins. We used to be dead in our trespasses at which we, at which we once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So we used to walk a certain way, but now we have to walk for God. Amen. We used to be marching for the enemy. We used to be about the devil's business, hurting people, corrupting people, instigating. I used to be an instigator, trying to get people to want to fight and stuff like that, and just, you know, stealing and lying and, and, and you know, just walking a certain way. So, so, so we see here that we used to live like this, it says, and you were dead in your trespasses trespasses and sins in which you once walked we used to walk like this but now we need to walk according to God how God wants us to walk amen, amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 2 3 Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 it says I therefore a prisoner for the Lord this is Paul speaking urge you to walk somebody say walk, walk. urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Not sit, not be still, not chill, not sleep. He says, I urge you, therefore, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So you and I have been called. We, 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 we have a calling upon our lives, and God wants us to walk in the calling that he has for our life. Walk worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness and patience. So, so what is it to walk in a manner worthy of the calling? Because, you know, we can just walk, but are we walking right? We can just walk, but are we walking in the right direction? Are we walking where God wants us to walk? We can walk, but are we going where we're supposed to be going? He's saying walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have, have been called. How? With all humility. So as Christians, as people of God, we should walk with humility. At one time, we were lost and bound. At one time, we were hurting, and, and, and we were walking in this certain way, un, not humble, prideful, if anything, right, and, and doing, doing our own thing. But then God saved us. God delivered us. God cleaned us up, turned us around, and now we're walk, we used to walk this way for the enemy, or, or we were not walking at all, or we were just, you know, I don't know, sleeping, whatever you like to do at home, just kick it and play video games. We, we were doing what we used to do, but now God saved us. And now we're walking with God. We're walking in this direction. But we don't just, it's not just walking. It's walking with purpose. Yeah. Walking, it's a designed type of walk. It's walking the way God wants us to walk. How? In humility. Somebody say humility. humility. With all humility. You know what humility is? It's putting yourself second. Putting God first. Putting others before you. Thinking less of yourself. Not in a negative way, but understanding I'm nothing without God. Understanding, man, that without, without God, I have nothing. I, I, when I pray, I like to remind God, God, or at least remind myself, God, I'm nothing without you. 
You, you are my joy. You are my peace. You are my happiness. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have my marriage. God, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have my family. God, if it, it wasn't, and that's me, you know, reminding myself, be humble. I didn't do this. I didn't put this together. I'm not, I'm not all that and a bag of chips. I'm nothing. But God gave me everything that I have, and that's me walking in humility and loving my brothers and sisters and serving my brothers and sisters, putting myself second, saying, are you okay? Do you need anything? Can I help you with this? That's humility, not do for me and, and get out my way and, you know, things like that. That's not humility. That's pride. It says with humility and gentleness. Gentleness, you know, God wants us to walk gentle. Some of us don't come from gentle backgrounds. Some of us come from abusive backgrounds, physically abused, verbally abused. And so, therefore, we carry these traits with us. We, we physically abuse, verbally abuse sometimes. But God is saying walk with gentleness. Some of us are a little too rough on the edges. God wants us to trim us down. We, 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 we handle things with our, with our hands, we, 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 we push people around, you know, physically. We still do these things. Our kids, we take it on our, on our kids a little too harshly or people around us, get out of my way, you know, or, or move, you know, and we're quick to put hands on somebody or, or we're quick to hurt people and tear down with our mouths, with our words. God is saying gentle with humility and gentleness, lift up. Build up. Bring people in. Help people. Don't, don't punch or hurt people. Punch and hurt the devil. You know, stop. Get, kick the devil. You want to be aggressive with somebody? Be aggressive with the devil. Be aggressive with the enemy. Say, get up out of my house. You can't be here no more. Get up out of my family. Devil, you can't be no, here no more. I might not be able to punch you physically, but I'll pray in the spirit, and I'll kick you out my family. I'll kick you out my mind. I'll kick you out my house. Devil, you have no place in me or around me or the people around me. I got a generation to win for God. And if there's anybody we need to get aggressive with, it's against the enemy. Devil, you better watch out. I'm victory outreach. You better move. Get up on my way. Give me my city back. Give me my people back. Give me my family back. Oh, I don't know if you guys hear me. We got to get a little bit of aggressive. We got to get aggressive. We got to get antsy, antsy. You know, like, oh, I got to move. I got to do something for God. Sometimes, man, we were like that in the world, but all of a sudden we're saved and sophisticated and, you know, just chilling. I got to sit in my chair. I got to have, I got, my, my shoes are too nice. <laughs> That's messing with somebody. Sometimes, oh man, my shoes are too clean. I can't. Before I go to the streets, I gotta go home and I gotta change my shoes. It don't matter about your shoes, man. We didn't care before. We didn't care how we looked before. We didn't care about none of that stuff before. We need to get aggressive and get out there and reach people for God and love people and love God. We gotta get aggressive for God. Kick the devil out your family. Kick the devil out your mind. Kick the devil out of everything. He shouldn't be around you, near you. Yes, he's going to try to oppress you. Yes, he's going to try to hurt you. But it's our job. God has given us the keys. God has given us what we need to fight back. We got to love each other, build each other up, help each other. Walk with humility, gentleness, patience. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. I like that right there. Bearing with one another in love. Like, man, I have to bear you right now. I don't want to, but, but I got to put up with you because God wants me to put up with you. God wants us to put up with, put, God wants us to put up with one another. Amen? Not kick each other out and, 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 and you, know, you know, get mad at each other, but love one another. But Paul says you got to bear with one another. He knew, he knew what was up. Bear with one another. Eager to maintain the unity of the spirit. In the bond of peace, eager to maintain the unity. As a church, we have to be unified. Somebody say unity. unity. We have to be unified. We have a vision. We're going somewhere. We're taking the islands for Jesus. We want to build churches. We want to plant churches. We want to build more men's homes, recovery homes. Don't you love what you see here in the men of God, in the men's home? Men are getting saved, delivered, equipped, trained. They're going to go to the school, to the UTC. They're going to come home and take their place. That's in the men's home. We need more men's homes. We need more discipleship homes. We need more. We, need more. we want to do more things. We have a vision, and, and it takes a unified church. Somebody say unity. unity. United in mind and spirit and heart. The way we walk, we got to walk together, talk together. We got to live together. We got to help each other, walk in, in a unit. 
in unity. Right? That means we, 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 when you, I, I don't know too much about the, mil the military, but I know when you march, it has to sound like one. A hundred footsteps need to sound like one footstep. A hundred people have to sound the, boom, the same. If not, it's all off. Ah, oh, disunified. You know who wants us disunified? You know who doesn't want unity is the devil. You know why the devil's lying to you and trying to get you to hate him or hate her or hate, hate, hate the leaders and this and that? Because a, a, a church that is not united will fall apart. A church that is not united ain't going to affect nothing, ain't going to build nothing. We're gonna, the devil is beating us up on the inside. How are we going to be effective on the outside? The devil is lying to you because he wants you to not be united because when you're, when you're separated, when you're not apart, we're unaffected. But we need to be united. We need to love each other. Put, bear with one another if we have to. Love each other. Forgive each other. Help each other. Speak life into one another. Because when we're unified, I don't care. What, shoot, if we're unified, when we go into a city, we're going to kick the devil out that city so fast because we're, we're an army. We're a unit. We're moving. We're powerful. We're strong because we're unified. I was telling somebody the other day, man, that we, we, when we're together, it's like we're locking arms, helping one another. But when somebody is falling or dis there's no unity, we, we, we allow a crack in the wall. And the enemy is going to come in that crack and try to mess everything up. And the devil would love nothing more than to get into it, seep into a church, and tear people up from the inside out. Because we're the church. We're the people of the church. And so he's saying, eager, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit. And the bond of peace. We need to be eager to maintain the unity. Some of us in spirit right now are not unified. Some of us right now, are, are, we're here physically, but spiritually or mentally, we're, we're, we're bitter, resentful. We're not even praying. We're not where God wants us to be. And it's in that, those little cracks that the enemy will come in and cause you to want to, to, to wanna, you know, not operate at the, according or how God wants you to operate. And so, therefore, we're no longer in unity. We got to be careful. We got to be careful. We got to be smart. You got to recognize the devil, recognize the lies, and, and pray for wisdom on how to handle situations. Amen? So that way we move forward. We're going to jump down Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. It says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as Gentiles do. Gentiles meaning like, you know, those that were not of God and not, you know, no, you must no longer walk as Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So we used to walk a certain way and in and, and, and the futility of their minds, darkened in hearts and understanding, alienated from the life of God. That was me. I was alienated from God. It's funny. It's cr not funny, but it's crazy because when I, w when I was young, I went to church. And I remember when I, fi when, I, when I stopped going to church, and I remember being introduced to new sins. Like, like I, I, I remember the opportunity I had to start sinning. And I would, and, and, and I would feel like a conviction. It's like cuss for the first time because because i went to church and then and then i stopped going to church and now i'm in school or, or i'm surrounded by people and they're cussing and and i remember like contemplating should i do it if i do it i'm gonna be like them because i knew god you get you, you guys understand the struggle that i'm talking about and then just doing it just like cussing but hurting god at the same time but i darkened my heart you know that's what sin will do to you it'll darken your heart every time you sin more and more and more you harden your heart towards God until you're fully calloused. You know what callous is? Men who work hard when they have callous right here or the bottom of their feet. Come on, somebody. Big old. <laughs> some of us got to chop that out. <laughs> Put some lotion on them bad boys. Don't you? <laughs> right? Uh, uh, our hearts. 
can become calloused. And we're just, we're, we're hard to everything, to look to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is trying to speak to us. The Spirit of God is trying to, is trying to help us and encourage us, but our hearts are hardened. We don't want to be hardened. We used to live that way, alienated from God, hard in the heart. He says, I love this. He says, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, put off your old self. So we have to walk putting off our old self, which belongs to our former manner of life. You know, that's our problem. We're trying to walk this new life with God with an old mentality. We're trying to walk this new way with the Lord, with the old figure, an old lifestyle. We're trying to bring our corrupt ways into a new relationship with God. You know who doesn't deserve that? God doesn't deserve that. God wants to renew us and build us and shape us, yet we're still, it's almost like you're in a new relationship with somebody, but you're still thinking about your ex. Come on, somebody, right? Can I, can I go there? Can I talk about it? You're trying to, God, God is trying to build a relationship with you and love you, husband and wife. We're the bride. He's the groom, and he's trying to, but, but we're still thinking about our former lifestyle, our former man or woman or our ways or whatever, and we're trying, God wants our full attention, but we're only giving him partial attention because our minds are still in the world. Our minds are still on him or her. Our minds are still, can I talk about it? Can we go there? Some of us think like that. Some of us do. We're, 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 we're holding on this way. And we're holding on this way. You can't have a relationship like that. It doesn't work. You can't live like that. You got to let go. He says, let go of the former ways. Let go of those old ways. Let go of that old mentality. Let go of those things and grab on to God. Go after God. I don't care if that the, the old way might be holding on to you, but you got to rip your way out of that and you got to run towards God. Does anybody in the house of God know how to run? If there's a time to run, it's now, but we're running towards God. God. We're running towards the things of God. We're going after God. Let go of the former ways. Put them off. Get rid of them. Kick them if you got to. Come on. Some of us know how to kick. Some of us know how to get grimy with it. Some, you know, you know when you see people fight and they start, you know, untying up their hair, earrings, and taking off their slippers. You know the whole. If you got to get like that, now is the time to get like that with the old self, with the former ways. Get into your boxing gear. Do what you got to do. You know, bang the devil if you got to, and run towards Jesus. We got to get like that. Can we get a little grimy sometimes? Can we get a little dirty sometimes and say, devil, I'm about to pop you. you oh, you're making me mad. And go after Jesus, not with each other. Some of us get like that with each other, wanting to fight each other and, 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 and get mad at each other. That We're giving in to the devil, and we can't do that. Amen? Put off those old ways and go after God. Live for God. I'm going to call the keyboard player up. I still have a lot more, but I don't want to keep us here too long. Is this good stuff? Is it making sense so far? We got to walk. Somebody say, walk it out. We got to walk it out. Amen. We got to walk it out. We got to work it out. We got to walk it out. We got to move. We got to run. Go after God. There's no better life than a life that's going after God. There's no better pursuit than pursuing God. I love that word pursuit. I don't know why I love it, but I love it. I remember I heard it like this. Ever the, since the day Adam bit the apple, God has been on a hot pursuit for you and I. Because it was that same day that he, he allowed sin into the world. He allowed these things. The day Adam bit the apple was the day we were separated from God. But ever since that day, God has been on a hot pursuit. For you and I, that breaks me to know that God is after me. That especially it breaks me because I know where I come from and I know I pushed God away. I know I denied God. I know I rejected God. Some of us are there. We're rejecting God. We're pushing him away. We're saying, God, I don't want you right now. God, I want to do what I want to do. I want to live the way that I want to live. God, stop trying to, you know, just, and, and, and yet he's still gentle with us. He's, he, he, he's still He's still caring and he's still He's still on a hot pursuit for you because he loves you, because he wants a relationship with you. you he, he, he wants to, he has a calling upon your life.
asked my dad, I was about 15, we were not in Christ. That was chaotic. That, 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 that moment, that season, the way it was handled, the way, everything about it, it was almost chaotic. It was like not, not, it was like more of a fear, a panic, a, everything outside of God. But I remember when my mom passed away, I was serving God. She was serving God, we were serving God. And it was peaceful. We were worshiping by her bedside. We, she worshiped, we worshiped, she worshiped her way into heaven. Her siblings by her side, her sons by her side. When she took her last breath, I saw her take her last breath. But it was peaceful, it was understanding. I knew that man, she's in heaven rejoicing. It was that's the best way I could put it. A life outside of Christ and a life in Christ. Chaos, peace, hatred, joy, no love. But man, it's just, I'm trying to, I want you to understand a life outside of God is no life at all. But a life in Jesus is a life of purpose, a life of joy, happiness, truth, understanding, love, everything, and then some. God gives you everything and then some. Everything you thought you wanted, you'll get it. And then some. God will take you to places you thought you'd never been before. God will connect you with people you thought you never would have connected with. God will bring people back into your life that you thought you never would have been with again. Or you, you know, you understand what I'm saying? God will do things in your life that you never could have imagined. And then some, when you when when you're faithful to him, he is faithful to you. Ephesians. I have one right here. I don't know if it's five verse five or four. I think it's five verse five. It says, therefore, be, imitated, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. A fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And walk in love. Let me say, walk it out. He says, walk in love. He used to walk like this. He used to live like this. Humility now. Gentleness. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself. So you and I are supposed to walk in love. How? The same way he loved us and gave himself up for us. So how does love look? What does that mean to walk in love, right? It's not just, not just words. It's, it's an action word. As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. So he, he sacrificed himself. For us. So how should we walk? What does it mean to walk in love? It means to walk in sacrifice. Walk in sacrifice. Laying your life down for God. Laying your life down for others. That's what it means to walk in love. Right? Don't you expect that in relationships? Do you love me? Well, then do this for me, right? The words don't cut it alone. Come on, sisters. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You don't love me. You just tell me you love me, but you don't mean it. You don't, you don't, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to go. <laughs> you can't just say you love me. You got to show me you love me. We expect that from man. Right? We expect that from people. But we don't put that same expectation in our relationship with God. We expect others to do it, but how about we live it too? With God. With God. Yes, hold the same standard. In your hold, hold that same standard with the Lord. Amen? Lay your life down for God. The Bible says it. Lay your life down for God as a fragrant offering, sacrifice, your time. Your time should be all about God's business. Your, everything you have should be about God's business. I'm going to bring it to a close. You can stand, stand with me. Amen? Is this good stuff so far? Does it make sense? Somebody say, walk it out. One more, uh, 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 chapter 5, verse 7. It says, it says, therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were, you were darkness, but now you are the light of the world. Walk as children of the light. The fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Let me read that one more time. Therefore, do not become partners with them. 
for at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light of the world. Walk as children of the light. Walk as children of the light. The fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. So how do we walk as children of the light? We walk in all that is good, that is right, and that is true. Walk in truthfulness. Some of us don't recognize truthfulness because we've lied so much growing up. Some of us don't understand what's being, what it is to be truthful. And I'll be the first to raise my hand. I thought I was a good liar. I thought I could lie. I thought I could lie my way out of everything. But guess what? I, I remember bringing that into the church. I remember when I first started serving God, I thought I could lie sometimes. And just that leads to, that led to just bad, I was all bad, bad character, bad heart, bad everything. And I didn't, and I had to teach myself, what does it mean to walk in truthfulness? Then you know what I had to do? I had to, whenever, I think I would lie whenever I felt like I was about to get in trouble or get rebuked. Like, <gasps> no, you know, I don't know. It's just like, I'm about to get, I'm, you know, when you get caught up in the corner and you can either tell the truth or lie and you know, it, either way is going to result, what the result's going to be. I had to say, I had to stop lying. And I had to just, how do you get through it? You, you speak, you tell the truth and you take the rebuke like a man. You take, you take it like a man. And it might hurt, but guess what? It's character building. And then you get into a habit of telling the truth. And then you get into a habit of like, you know what? I, I don't even put myself in situations to where I have to get rebuked no more. Or I'm doing something, you know, sly or scandalous for lack of better words. Or you're just, now you're living in truth. You're walking in truth. If you have a lying problem, allow yourself to get in trouble. You won't do it again, I guarantee you. Or you'll, you'll, you'll make a habit of speaking truth. And, a lie, and you know, the consequences of a life that's truthful is so much better than the consequences of a life that's full of lies. Live in truth. Walk in truth. Discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works. To, so to walk in light means you're being fruitful. To walk in darkness means you're being unfruitful. God wants us to walk in the light, being fruitful, truthful, honest. For some of us, this is new. For some of us, this is, we come from backgrounds where we don't walk like this. We've been hurt by the world because we have habits of lying and untruthfulness. And we're holding on to some of the world and God at the same time. It doesn't work. God wants all of you. God wants a relationship with you. God wants to love you. Does anybody in the house of God want more of God? If this is your first time in church or maybe you feel like, man, I, that's me. I come from that. I don't want that no more. I want more of God. I want to be like God. I want to keep in step with the Spirit. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. I want you to come to these altars and we're going to pray for you. But I also want to pray for people who sometimes, you know, it's possible to be in church for a number of years back to that lifestyle there's some people that maybe have been here for a few years and we're, we're going backwards and we're back to lying back to living this old way we're no longer gentle we're no longer patient we're no longer loving we're resentful we're holding on to things we're unforgiving it's possible and i'm gonna ask you to be truthful and, and to give it to god and allow god to operate on your heart and give you a new heart new mind and a new spirit the worship team is going to sing a song and if you fit in one of those two categories you're, you're tired of this lifestyle it's all you knew but now you want more i'm going to invite you up here to come pray and get a hold of god and we're going to break those chains and bondages in jesus name and i also want to invite you if you might be seasoned you might know everything but you find yourself still going backwards we're going to break that as well and we're going to ask for god's forgiveness and we're going to go after god amen they're going to sing a song, and I want to invite anybody to these altars so we can pray and get a hold of Jesus. These altars are open. Let's get a hold of Jesus.
pray with you. We have leaders that will pray with you. If you want to break some things in your life, in your heart, go to these altars and give it to Jesus. with the spirit
let's make room for the Lord this morning. this part. 